And Knox's work on the deer's cry is considered a meditative work. Yeah. How important is meditation to your work? Well, it's been a new thing. I have to say, I really struggled with creativity for a while, massively so actually. And I got all the books <laughs> to try and work out what I was doing wrong. I and mean, I was really, really, it was getting a big, big problem. And also, actually, also in the run up to the show, and you know, for other reasons, I'd started to learn to meditate about two years ago. And the more I read about creativity, the more I realised that it was the same thing. And the hero's journey was the words that were described on both counts um, about meditation and about creativity. Um, and it's one of those things that I've been learning more and more about it. And you, I suddenly realised what, what all these artists are writing about and singing about and what all this poetry is about, which has been fantastic because I you know, did find it very frustrating in the past. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's been very important and also it's important for this work because there are parallels between my, um, things in this work and the form of meditation that I've been learning. So yeah, it's been fantastic. And also I find that the, the meditation takes you to a space, I'm just trying to learn to sort of knock the brain out the way, to get myself out the way so the work can come through me. And that's what I found. So this work almost arrived on my desk. It was really strange. Um, it was just suddenly there. Also, the, the young actress still, it was just, I spent three days of just drawing. My mind wasn't involved at all, and a vast amount of work was created in that time. And I think that's all part of where, you know, where meditation and creativity meet. Now I know, thank goodness. <laughs> Yeah, that's an amazing, powerful part, an amazingly powerful part of, I think, creativity yeah. is that idea of letting go at some point yeah. and just letting the work flow. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could come back to this idea of Triscolls and the importance of Triscolls. Is yeah. there a theme through a lot of the work? Yes, I mean, the, the Triscolls, I, as I say, I had these American guests and I, I said there were three legs of man, yes, yeah, Sicily. And then looked into it, and it was the the, the, the three thing: um, birth, death, rebirth, um, father, mother, child, land, sea, sky. Um, and it seems to mean sort of like creation, movement, growth, integration. It almost sort of life itself seems to come from it. Um, and also the fact that it, it's like spinning; it's from the inner world into the outer world. Um, is also this, this sort of symbolism within the Triscoll lines going in and out which kind of also links with meditation and sort of life in general it's sort of powerful stuff actually and it's also a very ancient symbol you know there's eight there's triscals on ancient in bronze age stones in ireland i think the greeks i think it's on greek things as well um yeah and, it, and it's like these symbols seem to react on a on a primeval on a sort of deep level to people that you don't even know about which is something that i'm fascinated by i don't know too much about it but um, I'm very curious, and I, I was talking to a healer about um, my sort of three days drawing Triscolls that led to the Junkuniak logo, and she was going, hmm, that's interesting, you know, yeah, you'll be getting some integration by drawing that symbol, and I thought, well, that's interesting, so I was also very curious to see what reaction people would have to my Triscolls in L'Oreal. Um, because I was, I thought that there could well be an energy reaction to it. Um, just I don't know much about it because I kind of put, I laid them all out in my studio, and I could kind of feel something going on with them. And I, sure enough, I did have people reacting to them in L'Oreal, mm -hmm. which was great. That's just, I say, it's early days of me knowing all this stuff. But I'm very curious about it all.